Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a video that is ostensibly a review of this, the Mark IV Orient Bambino. But I want to go a little bit further, a little bit deeper than just a straight up watch review today. I want to hear from you, the thousands and thousands of people I'm sure who've purchased Orient Bambinos over the last few years. I mean, these things were the bell of YouTube. 2015, early 2016, a number of prominent YouTubers making very, very positive reviews about these watches. Indeed, I picked up my first rose gold and black Bambino very much based on the hype a couple of years ago. Now, it's getting harder as the channel gets bigger, but I still try and read every single comment that gets left on every single video that I make. I figure if you're taking the time to leave a comment that I should take the time to read it. Apart from anything else, half of you are nuts and I get a lot of entertainment from reading what it is you have to say, but some comments do stick in my head more than others. I remember reading one a couple of weeks ago from a gentleman who said that he had fallen into the Bambino trap. That got me worried. Is there such a thing as the Bambino trap? Had I fallen into the Bambino trap? Are we all now in some giant Bambino trap? And if so, how do I get out? And then I realised he was just using a metaphor and I calmed down, but I kind of knew what he meant. I think it was probably easy to get swept along on the wave of YouTube enthusiasm for this watch a couple of years ago and buy one without really thinking about whether it was the right watch for you, how you wear your watches and whether indeed you were going to wear this one. So then, the question for today, is there such a thing as the Bambino trap and did you and I willingly fall into that trap? Let's flip the camera and have a conversation, shall we? So what Bambino are we looking at today then? Well, this one, which is this one. These you can pick up on Amazon.com for 130 US dollars. They come in three different color schemes, this V4 version, all essentially the same thing. They have variations in the straps that's used on them as well. You can find a link to this one in the description below. The V4 has been in my Amazon storefront along with the V2, which I previously owned for many, many months now. So what happened to the V2 then? Well, the V2 was the star, inverted commas, of my second ever YouTube video that I recorded a couple of years ago. Pretty brutal, I was still recording on my mobile phone using a desk lamp as lighting, thinking I was pure sophisticated. But I was quite effusive in my praise of the watch at the time. I mean, it is a gorgeous looking item, particularly in low light conditions, I felt with my black and rose gold one, it really did pop after dark. However, my time with the Bambino V2 was rather short lived. I didn't wear it an awful lot, I found it just didn't fit into my life. And in spite of not wearing it all that much, I put it on one day and I found a massive gouge in the mineral crystal. I then spent several hours trying in vain to polywatch the gouge out, selling the watch on eBay the next week as a damaged item. So, why on earth am I trying again with the V4? Well, I had always quite fancied the look of this one and I thought it was high time I gave the Bambino a second crack. These V4s though are considerably larger than the models which preceded them, 42 millimeters in diameter as opposed to 40.5. Still they managed to keep it relatively slim, it is just under 12 mil thick and most of that coming from the domed uh, scratch magnet domed mineral crystal, 48 and a half lug tip to lug tip and thankfully they have standardized the lugs 22 mil lug width, meaning that if you are picking up one of these V4s and you don't fancy this suede and leather combo or whichever strap the one that you've chosen comes with, it is easy enough to, to trade out. Weighed up on this strap, this one comes in at just under 70 grams, so a nice and light watch on the wrist. And for $130, you're certainly getting something that looks very attractive. 316XL stainless steel case, crown, and case back, solid case back. I don't imagine that movement is all that attractive, so no problem with having a solid case back on this one. And the movement contained within that case back is a considerable step up from the one which preceded it, the Caliber F6724, so it's a brand new in-house Orient movement, 22 joules. This one, unlike predecessors, 
it hacks, it hand winds, it's got a date function there. It operates at 21,600 vibrations per hour, so it's a, a three hertz movement. You get six ticks per second of that little second hand there. Stated accuracy on this one is plus 25 to minus 15 seconds a day, although mine did rather better than that. This one's spinning away in the boxy winders for coming up on three weeks or so. Not a bad result then, given the budget conscious nature of the Orient Bambino in general, coming in at just under minus six seconds per day. But I gotta say, it's noisy. Now, one of my major complaints with the Mark II Bambino was that the movement was dog rough. This one is a little better, but it is still pretty noisy. I'm gonna bring in some old friends. The kittens of Rotor Noise Doom. I haven't used these guys in a while. I'm going to move the watch near to the microphone, give it a good shaking, and hopefully you can hear just how noisy this in house Orient mechanism is. All that noise does rather run counter to this one's supposed elegance and sophistication. It certainly feels rougher than it looks, unfortunately. But it does look pretty nice, doesn't it? Quite a pronounced grey sunburst effect on the dial there, and the dial curves downwards towards the edges. We've got these lovely rose gold copper toned applied indices, kind of little truncated arrowheads. Very small handset on these V4s though, perhaps a little too small, especially given that the watch itself increased in size from 40 and a half to 42. The handset rather shrunk, so they do tend to get a little bit lost on all the real estate of the dial there. Little embossed or Orient Crown, pretty simple, Orient Automatic, water resistant and advertising Japan movement. And we've got a, quite a, a simple minute track all the way around the outside. I do like the little red tip, just adds another little pop of color, matching nicely with the red of the Orient logo there. And a very simple printed date frame around the date complication at the three. Case and case finishing is adequate, if nothing more than that. Polished throughout, unsigned crown, but it is fairly grippy if you do want to, to hand wind it, as is now your want. And these new straps are pretty good as well. A distinct improvement on the rather tough leathery ones of the previous generations. Kind of two-tone here, we've got a little bit of suede on the upper with some genuine leather backing to it as well. And we've got the Orient logo etched into the buckle, which is again a nice touch at the price from one of the big brands. There it is, sitting on top of my seven inch wrist, 42 mil. You know, it's probably towards my maximum. I tend to try and keep my watches between about 36 and 42, but it looks good. That nice piece of domed mineral crystal there really kind of making the watch. Definitely one of the signature features. I chose this particular version, the V4, because I love the color scheme, the kind of copper rose gold, the gray, and then that nice pale brown suede finish of the strap, a nice cohesive look overall this one. I really do like the color schemes of the Bambino, big fan of the rose gold and black version two that I had and enjoying this one as well. But equally, I could probably have gone for the green version that I showed you earlier on, I think. Great color schemes overall, a little bit different. And there it is, zoomed out for a little more perspective. Not quite sure why they went up though, rather than going down from 40 and a half to a slightly smaller, slightly more elegant size. Their move from 40 and a half to 42 seemed to run counter with the market. I think the market generally now, the big watch craze is over and people are moving to slightly smaller designs. Not sure how many of these V4s they've sold in relation to the Mark IIs, Mark III's, Mark I's and so on. Those ones are still available though, you can still pick them up if you prefer the slightly smaller size. And the sunburst effect and those applied indices do look quite good out and about. They are a nice sunny day in Sydney. Everything nice and crisply done, crisply finished, nicely printed. No QC issues here as well as you would expect from, from a major manufacturer. But that dome crystal is a bit of a scratch magnet. I picked this one up lightly used. Perhaps you can make out there are a couple of little nicks just to the left of the O in the Orient logo. The previous owner clearly as much of a klutz as I am. My previous ownership experience of the Mark II Bambino is one of the reasons why I'm so hard on Seiko and other brands that don't supply sapphire crystal as a matter of course on their watches. I'm just a bit too clumsy for mineral crystal. As nice as this is, 
I'm kind of reluctant to leave the house wearing one of these watches for fear of scratching it. I know that people get used to this style, they get used to uh, looking after a watch on their wrist, but I'm generally too clumsy or otherwise occupied and I don't give a sensitive watch like this the care and consideration that it necessarily deserves. So then, is there such a thing as the Bambino Trap? It's kind of hard to argue too much against this watch given how pretty it is, how damn pretty it is for only 130 US dollars. I think the question remains, how do you wear your watches? I think this mineral is a little bit too sensitive for me, so perhaps the Bambino is not for me. I don't really have occasion to wear a dress watch all that often myself either. I don't work in an office Monday to Friday, nine to five. I think if you were an office worker or this type of watch would suit you wearing it during the day times in an office, then I see no problem with the Orient Bambino as long as you're prepared to be a little bit careful with that crystal and as long as you don't mind the fact that you'll certainly be aware of the watch on your wrist that that movement does creak and rattle a little bit you can feel and hear the rotor winding away on your wrist so it comes down to how do you own and wear your watches then but you tell me was it you that left me the comment talking about the bambino trap did you buy one of these two years ago and have a a poor experience with it is it languishing in a drawer somewhere or did you scratch it and flip it like me leave me a comment let me know so there you have it orient bambino mark four then a handsome big watch with the emphasis on big, I'm still not quite sure they went from 40 to nearly 42 rather than shrinking it down to about 38, 38 and a half. I think that would have been a better choice for Orient to make. So is there such a thing as the Bambino trap then? And did you, or indeed did I, fall into it a couple of years ago? Well, I suppose there's a trap in that any watch purchase is a trap for the unwary. If you don't think about the watch, how it fits into your collection, how it fits into your life, and whether or not it fits into how you wear your watches and the kind of watches that you like to wear. But at around 120 US dollars, it's not a particularly expensive trap to fall into and an easy one to get out of. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.